All right. Hello, 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 my party people. Um, it, this is the Two Spool for School podcast, and I'm your host, Lo. Um, this is a knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, weaving, felting, sewing podcast. Um, yeah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been here before, you know the drill. Grab a beer. Do you want me to go get you one from downstairs? I'll go grab one. No? You got it. Okay, cool. And if you're new, um, you're also welcome to grab a beer. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you find something a little bit fun, uh, a little bit weird, a little bit crafty in this space. Um, it has been a while since I've come to you, uh, and I've got very good reasons, so uh, I will get to those later. Um, but in the meantime, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, so the format of today is going to look a little, just a little different than it normally would. Um, and I'm going to break it down into sections and I will put those, no, um, we're going to go this side today. I'm going to put those as I cover up my huge pile of mess that I have here in all my notes. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to put the sections over here and they'll also be down in the description bar and along the, uh, chapter title bar. Um, so we are first going to start with what we would normally start with, which is a beer, because I am extremely thirsty and had oh, a day at work. So um, what we are drinking today is a wild little thing from Sierra Nevada. So I'm sorry I haven't been that adventurous with the beers recently. I haven't had a chance to really get anything special from my uh, local craft beer store. But uh, this is a good little sour that you can pick up in your grocery store. So they usually come in a big um, variety pack or I think they sell them separately too uh, as a six pack. But yeah, it's a guava, hibiscus, and strawberry. And it's a beautiful pink. So... Uh, we'll wait for the head to dissipate a little bit to get the rest of this in here. And I'll chat with you while we're doing that. Um, so the next thing we can talk about is what I'm wearing. So this is the Damask uh, Pullover from Marie Amelie Designs. Uh, and I knit this in uh, a combo hand spun that I did from three Three Water Farms braids um, from her uh, Top of the Month Club. And it was a combo fractal spin of sorts. Oh, finally. Um, so I'll give you a little tour of the sweater. Um, it's one of my favorite sweaters I've made so far. So, so this is what we've got. And then the skirt is the Daylily skirt by Mood Patterns, which can't really see it, but it's a three-tiered, I'm just going to do, 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 so there we go. It's a three-tiered skirt, um, and I got this uh, mustard twill, cross twill from Fabric Mart Fabrics, most likely. That's what I'm going to say, uh, because that's where I get most of my fabrics from. So. The first um, section we're going to have today is actually uh, the North Carolina State Fair ribbon update. So um, every year I submit uh, some of my knitted and woven stuff to the uh, North Carolina State Fair um, for judging. And this year um, that happened in the... Oh, pretty foul. Um, the mid beginning of October. And so um, I submitted nine things and I got seven ribbons. So we'll talk about what I got and what I didn't get. Um, so two things that I submitted didn't get ribbons. And you've seen these before if you've been here. So this is the necklace top um, by Neyama Idu. That is a lace weight knit top that I did beading on um, it has an open back, um, and I'm guessing that that has part of the reason why it didn't get a ribbon. So I, they also, the North Carolina State Fair kind of made their categories a little weird, um, in the last, uh, last couple years. So this, I, 
um, submitted in adult garment. Um, I did get a little beautiful work uh, <laughs> tag here, but no ribbon, uh, which is fine. I just figured they probably wouldn't be so keen on that big open back. The uh, I think the judges tend to be a bit more conservative, which is fine in the knitting world only. Um, and then this one, which you've seen uh, a few episodes back if you have been watching, and this was the Paris and Berlin cowl um, by Hohi Locatelli. And it was hand spun out of an alpaca polward silk from Spotted Circus. Um, and I can't remember the name of the colorway, so. But that I submitted in hand spun accessories. Want lot. No, no ribbon for this. But now we're gonna work our way up. So, uh, I got for third place. If I can find the other one, I'll just show you one. Um, Cause again, these you've seen before too. And I was wearing these earlier in the week, so they're a bit crunkly. Uh, this is the spring blossom sock. So this got. Um, a third place ribbon. I should actually get the ribbons, huh? So I can show you. Ribbon tangle. So this one was the This was just something else. That was the ribbon for that one. Third place. Ta-da. Um, bloop. Uh, also got a third place ribbon. Is my Rhapsody and Cables. This is also a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Um, and I knit this uh, last winter. Um, so this got a third place in the what is it called adult or teen sweater vest or sleeveless sweater category so there's that ribbon goes with that one all right so I got two second place um, so the first one was Got to grab these two. So, um, show you the ribbons and I'll put in little pictures. So, this one was for the uh, hand woven skirt that I uh, wove and sewed up. Um, just a little pleated skirt, and uh, will be a picture right here. And then this guy, uh, and I, that was in hand loomed fabric. Any garment is what I won that second place in. And then this one was for adult hand spun weaving. And that was for my cram and dent scarf that I showed you a few weeks back. Um, and again, I'll put in a picture. So then I was able to uh, score a few blue ribbons and these were all for spinning. So the first one who I actually I unfortunately actually lost the ribbon for this as I was leaving the state fairgrounds. So that's really bum, a big bummer. But this is my cotton candy super coils. And so this one, a blue ribbon for novelty yarns. Um, then I had, oh, and here's that second sock in case you were curious if there was another one. Uh, this one won first for Adult plied non-animal yarn dyed. So this was, um, this is also an FO that you have not seen. Um, so this was a spin with a uh, rayon fiber from eucalyptus. Uh, and I dyed this fiber myself. Did an ice dye back in the summer. 
Uh, and I think, I believe I was podcasting at that point. I should have showed you the fiber. Um, there is some more of it. I didn't spin up the whole thing. Uh, but this came out to be uh, 35 grams and about 90 yards. And it came in at about a sport weight. Um, and it, it's really nice. I really like the, uh, it really reminds me of an impressionist painting. So it was kind of cool. Hey, Jasper. We've got, I don't think you can see him, just barely. Hi, buddy. We got our co-host, Jasper, but since you co-host, say hi. Look over there. Look over there. Where are you going? Where are you going, bud? You want to be in my lap? What am I going to have him? No? Want to be here? Mm -hmm. No, you just want to make noise over there? Yeah, that makes sense. That's his spot. So um, I tried to set up the camera earlier so that we could see him. And then the, the dogs made a whole bunch of fuss, um, as they do. Um, they are not taking kindly to daylight savings time because their treat time is firmly at 7 p.m., which is, of course, now 6 p.m. Uh, so they have been bribed early to let me podcast but it's been a whole ordeal. Hasn't it, kids? Luca's right down here. So the last uh, first place ribbon that I got is this one for adult plied wool yarn. And then is this guy. And you saw him as an FO um, last episode. You actually saw his big brother as an FO. So this was the end of this, uh, the project that I was working on. So this is uh, Shaniko Marino, and the colorway was called Carolina Wren from the Fiber Studio at Yarns to Die For. And so for the rest of the yarn, I split the braid in half and spun one end to end, or stripped it down, stripped the half down into the little strips. And then with the second half, I blended it on my hackle. So this one is just the barber pulled remains of the first part of the spin. And I'll get into what the uh, big brother to it became. So yeah, that is uh, this year's haul from the state fair. Um, pretty happy. Uh, yeah, no, no records. I believe I got seven um, ribbons last year as well. So. So yeah, but it was a good showing all in all. I had a friend who made a, a great big periodic table blanket um, and she got second place and it looked beautiful. Another friend in my knitting group uh, got first place for sweaters and she did great. So it was, it's always really fun. I like to see people enter and, um, and win some stuff. Yeah, I, I believe I'll get like, you know, 65 whole dollars from my winnings eventually <laughs> so um that'll buy you know two or three skeins of yarn can't uh sneeze at that so now we are going to go into fo's and i've got a bunch so i'm going to first show you stuff that i um that i was working on last episode so I just realized I forgot my first one downstairs. So if you would pardon me for one second while I go grab it. All right. So this is the Live Summer Top by Johanna Schutz. And it's done. So uh, this came out really cute. I'll insert some pictures of me wearing it. Um, I took those today as it was 87 degrees outside, even though it is early November here in North Carolina. So that's a little frustrating. Um, but yeah, this was a really fun project. Uh, I think I spoke a little bit about it in the other episodes, but the original design has you knit from the uh, bottom of the main body up and then uh, knit this band separately and sew them together. But what I did was I knit the band first um, 
did the knot seaming in the middle and then picked up stitches to then knit the body. So uh, one of the other modifications that I made was it calls for an I-cord uh, strap, but instead of that I did a double knit strap. Um, and it looks basically the same. Uh, it may even act basically the same. But it's a little bit more structured, just a little, I think, than an I-cord. Uh, gives me a little bit more coverage. Because I think I made it a stitch wider than it would have been. So let's see. I knit the size 5 on this. And something exciting is that this just recently um, was expanded size-wise. So it's now size inclusive, which is really exciting. I love when... Um, designers go back to some of their old patterns and really make an effort to make them size inclusive because um, that's something that's pretty important to me. Uh, so I knit the size 5, I think I said that, I don't remember, it used about 512 yards of yarn. Oh, and the yarn I didn't mention is um, created for you by Laura and it is her shimmer uh, stash in the color daffodil. That is that. All right, so my next FO is a crocheted one. And it is the very roll, rolling up uh, Clio wide brimmed fedora. Um, so yeah, I did it. Uh, I'm done making brimmed hats. This is my last one. Um, it's heavy. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to wear it. It has this curl that keeps happening that I'm not a huge fan oh. of. Um, <sighs> yeah. I think, I think I've finally gotten the broomed hats out of my system, which is good because I think only one out of the three really ended up the way that I wanted it to. So uh, this was a pattern by Whoa. Jess Copham. And the yarn that I used was World of Yarn Java in Charcoal Melange. And that's a yarn from Hobie. Uh, I used a 5.5 millimeter eye hook. And uh, this took about 203 Whoa. yards or one and a half skeins. So I may go back and try to find some way to fix this end or I might just be uh, Dunzo. So, I'm gonna go deal with whatever needs Luca is trying to get me to deal with, um, because a beagle awu in the background just isn't great. Background noise. I will be right back. All right. So, fun fact for you, it has been no time, but for me, it has been about an hour. So it turned out my camera just decided to get corrupted and not film. So that was fun. So I filmed a whole hour and a half. Podcast and got about 25 minutes out of it. So uh, at least we stopped off at a pretty even spot. So we're just going to jump right back in because I'd rather do it tonight than uh, get all this stuff back out some other night, so. All right, I'm gonna be a little obsessive about checking to make sure that it's actually filming. So let me do that right now, and then I will get back into the FOs. I don't know. Maybe it's time for a new camera. All right. So our next FO is one you haven't even seen as a work in progress. Of course, everything's now. Not that it was a very organized pile to begin with, but now it is definitely not. So, um, 
So the next one you heard me talk about as an idea, but you didn't actually see it being worked on. So we have a finished object. So this is the Ribblesdale vest. Yay! So this is a pattern by um, Lily Kate France. And I knit this in Knit Picks Upcycle uh, Reserve Worsted. And this was the color Amarillo, but I over dyed it in a burgundy, which I show you a few episodes back, I believe. So, um, yeah, I had about, uh, I had a dog that has come up to say hi. Hello, Luca. Hello. What do you want? Do you want to come up? Do you want to sit where my notes are sitting and just chill out? Yeah, you do. All right, come on. All right. Yeah, that's my baby. All right. All right. Beagle co-host in the house. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. So back to the vest. Um, so I had leftovers from that milk stout sweater. And uh, I decided to over dye them uh, to this lovely... <laughs> She's just going to climb all over the stash. She got this. It's fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe not. Are you doing the thing that you do where you're trying to make yourself a comfy spot? And instead, it's all my hand knit. Oh, and my ribbons. And yeah, okay. 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 Oh. Oh, that's not ideal. I wish you wouldn't. Are you are you tangled? Oh no. Oh no. Are you good? Can I have some of this stuff? Good. Good, good job, Luca. Here we go. Here, lay down, lay down. You got a comfy sweater. Here we go. Comfy, comfy color mist. That's the name of the yarn. Here you go. Okay. All right. So where was I? God, how many times am I going to talk about this vest? Okay. So it is a um, one color brioche pattern. It is, uh, <laughs> or fisherman's rib, as some people say. So um, it was, I had just, I don't, I thought I had just enough yarn, but I had more than enough. Um, I knit the size five. And it took 521 yards. Um, and I... I'm sorry about being distracted. Let's get... If she's going to be here, let's get her, like, in the frame. Why not, right? Co-hosts deserve space, too. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> A little closer. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, I had never knit a vest before. This is my ver. I had never knit a vest before. This is the first vest I've knit, and uh, I went ahead and did something I had been wanting to do for a while, which is try reinforcing the uh, button band of a sweater with grosgrain ribbon. So uh, this is the part where the buttonholes are, and then this is the part where the buttons are. And these buttons were from my grandmother's button stash that I uh, inherited quite a while back. I got a cute little mid-century box that keeps all the buttons. So uh, it may have been one of my mom's, it may have been one of my grandma's, it's hard to say. Uh, it might have been one of mine, honestly. I just we just throw all the extra buttons in there. Yeah, it was a sweetie. Now she's getting comfy. All right. 
So, so yeah, um, this has been really fun to wear. Uh, I've really enjoyed making it. And, uh, yeah, squishy brioche fabric. Not much more to say about that. So, the next project is over here. And it is the Toff Hat from Wooly Wormhead. So, um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this pattern. It's a very popular pattern pattern. Um, and I knit this, uh, the, the pattern calls for DK weight yarn, um, but I actually use two worsted weight yarns. And um, the brown is a uh, farm yarn that I got while I was visiting my parent or my partner's family in West Virginia. And it is from Head Spring Fiber Mill. It's a two ply worsted called Fiona. I imagine Fiona is one of the names of the uh, the sheep that have given us their their lovely fleece. Um, so it is 90% wool and 10% alpaca. And then the uh, contrast color is a hand spun of mine, which is right here. I've got about half of this skein left. And this is uh, deep dyed yarns, uh, the SAF 2021 colorway, which was called Dark Harvest, and it was a Cheviot. So, uh, yeah, I will get into later uh, why I knit this hat, um, but it's got a good little story behind it, so um, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that is uh, that. It came out really well with the hand spun, very autumn autumnal, so yeah. Um, that's that finished object. So my next finished object, I no longer have, uh, but I will place an image here. Um, and it is what I'm calling my monochromatic uh, wall hanging. So I have a friend named Anne who is a designer and she's a lovely human in person. Um, and for her aesthetic, for her uh, living space, she's gone very monochromatic, uh, very low contrast, very low saturation, but very high texture. So she did this amazing, um, this amazing uh, piece of art where she took like some kind of molding paste, a putty or um, spackle, I think it was spackle, and she did this amazing like just white textured art piece. Um, really incredible. And so I tried to distill that down into a woven piece. And so I wove this on my little Ikea loom. Uh, and uh, I just went with all of my lowest saturation uh, yarns and fabrics, which uh, is a little bit hard for me. I, I live in, in rainbow, you know, so. Um, so yeah, I just tried to distill down texture. And so I used uh, things that had a rough texture like uh, fabric from a coat that I sewed a few years ago or um, like a soft bamboo velour that I kind of ripped into ribbons and uh, some banana fiber uh, so and lace and so um, it was really fun to work on um, that's going that's gone to live in her home already so uh, she's she's gotten that so yeah that's my monochromatic wall hanging so uh, yeah. All right, so um, my next thing I'm going to talk about is my spinning. So you saw the little brother earlier, um, and now you're going to see the big brother. So this was what I was working on uh, last uh, video, and this is the... Uh, Shaniko Merino Spin, um, and it is in the colorway Carolina Wren, and the fiber is from the Fiber Studio at Yarns to Die For, and they're out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And so this is my spin, and so what I did with this was I split the braid in half, and I uh, spun, I took one half and I split down into very thin strips, and I spun those end to end, and then the other half, I blended on a hackle. So I wanted one ply to be very blended and one ply to be the one that would have the hits of color 
um, even though it's still a pretty neutral, you know, you had browns and uh, grays and yellows in there. So, so that was that guy. So this is the end of that um, one. So the, the ply that I didn't blend, I got more yardage um, out of because I did lose a little fiber in the, <laughs> waving this around. Uh, <laughs> I lost a little fiber in the blending process. Uh, so I had more of the one ply than the other, so that's the end of that. Was the, I need to stop waving this around. Um, that got me my, my blue ribbon here. Um, and then this guy. So uh, they all came out to a fingering weight yarn. And for this one, I got 587 yards for 178 grams. So this started off as an 8-ounce braid. And so between the two, I have about... 700 yards. Um, I had intended on this to be a sweater spin, although I don't know what I was thinking. I keep doing this um, where I think that eight ounces of fiber is going to be enough for a sweater, which doesn't make any sense because I wouldn't try to make a sweater out of two uh, two balls of yarn or two skeins of yarn, um, but I seem to think that I can somehow spin that same amount of fiber into enough. So um, I have a plan for what this is going to become. Um, it will be a sweater and I've, it's got a partner that you'll see later. Um, so yeah, what else do I have to say about this? Uh, nothing else. Yeah, it came out as a fingering weight yarn. I think I said that. So yeah, uh, I really like the way it came out. So that's that. So the next thing you didn't even see as a work in progress either. Um, but this is a, uh, a, a braid that I spun and this was a braid from Three Waters Farm and it was called Spring Wash and it's a Falkland. And this came out as a light fingering and I spun this uh, worsted as a, uh, a fractal, a two ply fractal. So one, one uh, half the braid I spun end to end, the other one I split into uh, three. So uh, that is that. This has a specific purpose. Um, it is going to be paired with this yarn, which is Holstgarn Noble in Loganberry for the Aqualegia pullover from Unwind Knitwear. Um, Rachel Isley. Um, is the designer and she does these amazing color work uh, sweaters that I've been wanting to knit. They're kind of like low contrast and just beautiful and so I thought these would be really nice together. Um, there are some parts of this yarn that almost match this exactly so it is going to be very like low contrast which I think is going to be beautiful because those designs really uh, sing with that. So yeah, light fingering. I ended up with uh, 100 or 501 yards and 115 grams of fiber. E she, she has a flipped over, flipped over ear. All right. So the last uh, finished objects I have are from. Uh, <laughs> Come here, baby. Um, from Halloween. So I decided two, two and a half days before Halloween that we were going to dress up and I was going to make the costumes and I was going to do it like last minute immediately because I am a being of pure chaos. So uh, I decided that I was going to be Bowsette and my partner was going to be Toad. So I made a whole bunch of stuff for our our costumes and so let me show you what I made so I 3d printed some stuff I sewed a bunch so um, this guy lost his little mushroom let me see if I can find him Aha. so this is a little 3d printed super crown Oop, mushroom is all so this was for my Bowsette costume and then I had these horns that I 3D printed as well. There's two of them. So those are those. Here. 
And then I... had this corset and this was pre-made this is something I had from a long time ago but I put this little uh, little jewel thing here that I made that and this is the big thing for me the thing I can use as not just a uh, a costume this is a self-drafted full circle skirt so uh, this is leftover fabric. Um, it is a lycra, a poly lycra ottoman double knit. Uh, and I had about a little over a yard left from sewing uh, a dress that I wore to my partner's uh, grandfather's funeral. And so I was able to cut out two half circles out of that, sew them together. It's got pockets. Um, it's got about a 20 inch uh, length. Um, it's got an elasticated waistband. And yeah, this was all self-drafted and I finished it in about two hours. So I was super happy to have done this. Um, this really felt like I finally have leveled up my sewing skills enough that I can just be like, I'm gonna whip out a skirt. So i um, really happy with that. And then the last, oh, and then I did this little overskirt or this like hip bustle thing. Um, I have no idea what you call this, but it's, you know, on Peach and those type of Mario uh, princesses. It goes right over there. So I made that. It's got a cute little uh, fancy button closure on the, the back. And then the piece de la resistance is my uh, my big Koopa shell. So <laughs> made the Koopa shell. Um, this is all I-cord here, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Got these squishy, squishy guys. And then uh, this piece of elastic, which helped me keep it on my body. So, and this is just a pillow that I bought from Walmart last year. And now it is a shell. So my partner was Toad, so I made him his Toad hat. And Toad vest. So um, I filmed the whole process of making the, the costumes that I'm gonna be putting up in a vlog. Uh, soon i have to uh edit all those videos together and it is a lot so uh it's my first vlog so um that'll be coming soon um yeah and that is the last of my finished objects for the second time all right so now we're on to works in progress all right so, I have one work in progress that you've seen before, so I will show that, I will share that first. And that is the first panel of my Velicor. It's done. So, I uh, finished this up a few weeks ago. Um, it came off the needles and it seemed a little bit uh, narrow. So I went ahead and blocked it, um, really stretched it out and it's got a really nice drape now. Um, and I think it's because of the, the heavy blocking and it is now the right width. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the yarns that were, so Velicor is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and it is a, a little boxy style, uh, t-shirt so uh, <laughs> the yarns that we're using here are uh, the the black is Holstgarn Tides which is their wool silk blend in Raven uh, the court uh, contrast color is a hand spun 
So this is a Targi that is tangled in my dog. Um, Targi from Fiber Nymph Dye Works, and the colorway is called Pinwheel. So there's that. It's got greens and purples, um, and I think it's coming along really nicely uh, in this. And I don't know if it really comes across. Ah, there we go. Um, and then the dark uh, lines in the the middle or in the that break up the pattern are a Knit Picks palette in Iris Heather. So yeah, so I finished this panel and was going to immediately um, cast on the next one before I started another sweater, uh, but then I thought about it and it, this is going to be such a lightweight garment that I think this might go into hibernation until uh, spring. I'd rather work on some of the heavier sweaters that I have planned uh, or already on the needles um, for winter. So yeah, this is going to be coming back out in the spring. So uh, what else can I say about this? I'm knitting the size four. Uh, yeah. So Bellacore. So everything else I think is new that you haven't seen yet. So uh, this next one is the Sunray sweater by Cecilia Daring. Daring. Um, I'm knitting the size extra large and oh this uh, okay yeah that that's oh yeah yep 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 that's making me happy that is what I'm going for that is the exact uh, the look I'm going for so this is a two uh, color brioche pattern so I was on a brioche kick after finishing the Ribblesdale did I say that right? yeah Ribblesdale vest I figured while my muscle memory for brioche was still kicking, I would start this. Uh, I had bought the yarns for this earlier in the summer, so the yarns that I'm using is our Drops Air in uh, co uh, Blush and Coral Reef. So Blush is the light pink, Coral Reef is the coral color. Um, and if you have not worked with Drops Air before, it is a blown yarn, so there is a tube of nylon and the wool and alpaca fibers are blown into it. So it, it has a very light, um, light but warm type of uh, yarn. So uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I just passed the uh, split for the sleeves and uh, not to give away anything with the secret sauce, but this has been really interesting because there have been no increases or decreases in the brioche. So um, I'm really interested to see how that works out. Um, I think it really kind of depend. It really uh, will be shaped by the texture of the brioche itself, where it kind of will look more close together up at the top, and then stretch out as it gets to the wider parts of your body. So uh, I'm excited to see this. I'm knitting this so that it can be reversible. So I'm being. Uh, very careful with my ends and weaving them in. Um, so, yeah. So that is all I have to say about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing is I did a swatch for this and uh, I actually ended up going down a needle size. So I got gauge on the recommended US 10s, but I did not like the fabric. Um, it was too loose for me. I don't know if I have the, uh, I, somewhere, it might be under Luca, who knows. Um, she's now covered in yarn. Um, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna start like piling yarn on her. I don't even think she's gonna notice. Okay, nothing. Um, so, uh, so I went down um, to a US 9 instead of a US 10. So the difference is uh, 6 millimeter to 5.5 millimeter. Um, I, I don't know if I'm still getting gauge. It's a little tricky in brioche to measure, um, but this was going to have a little bit of positive ease anyway. So, um, and I just like the fabric better. Uh, it's a little bit more cozy. Um, so yeah, Sunray sweater. Yeah. Let's put that one down. 
there. We'll put that one on the butt. Put this one over here. No dog, just yarn. All right, so the next one is somewhere. So I talked about this last time I filmed, uh, which you have not seen, no one will ever see. It is gone to the sands of time, to the corrupted file graveyard in the sky. But um, I have three different types of projects that I do. I have um, my purse project, which is always the simplest. I have my couch project, which is very little thinking, but can be a little bit more complicated. This one is couch. And then I have desk project that is the most complicated. So I'm going to show you my purse project. And this is a pair of socks that I cast on uh, before we headed out to SAF. So I needed something to knit in the car. I wasn't driving. So um, I cast on these. So the yarn is Southwest uh, Trading. Uh oh, is all the yarn moving? <laughs> no. Southwest Trading Company uh, in Little Star is the, na the name of the base, and the colorway is A Toscana. Um, I don't believe you can find this yarn anymore. I bought it as they were clearing it out. It was $3 for this uh, 50 gram cake. And I split the 50 gram cake in two. So I got two 25 gram balls, nine more. Some of them are in the sock. Um, and I um, cast on a contrast toe. So the toe is Knit Pick Stroll Glimmer in Peacock. Um, and so my plan was just to knit these as a tube. So I'll do afterthought heels um, and then uh, use the contrast color for the heels and the cuff. So uh, these were intended to be a gift, but they're pretty wild. So I don't know if the recipient of the gift is going to want that, but the benefit of me not knitting the heel as I go is that once I'm done with them, I can kind of make them for anyone. So uh, we'll see at the end if they end up being for me or for someone else. But yeah, those are my purse project right now. So, so the next whip I'm working on is here. And this is the project that Luca is currently tangled in. This is the Daily Rituals Raglan by Park Williams. And we've just got a little bit of a yoke so far, not that much. And the yarns that I'm using Falling off, Luca. The main yarn is uh, Stroll, uh, Knit Pick Stroll Tonal in Raven, which is really funny because the black color in the Velicor is also a colorway called Raven. So uh, I'm knitting with two yarns called Raven. <laughs> so that's that. And then that is held double with uh, drops brushed uh, alpaca silk in black and what used to be off-white that I have over dyed in this pinky purple. So what I am doing, this is just a uh, normal one color raglan, but I am striping it. So every three and a quarter inch, I am striping the mohair. So we've got this big block of black up here, which I don't know if you can see any of the, the detail with the, um, the tonal yarns. Let me see, which way is the light better? Mm -hmm, probably this way. Um, and then what's happening? So you get the, uh, the stroll coming out better with the black, and then you get really cool uh, marled look with the the pink 
brush silk mohair. So, so yeah, um, I'm knitting a size extra large, and these are being knit on US size 7 needles or 4.5 millimeters. So yeah, this has been pretty fun. Um, it's growing pretty quickly. I just cast this on like late last week. So I'm pretty excited about this guy. So that's that one. So I told you I was going to tell you about who's going to be living with this guy. And that is my next. <laughs> oh no, your butt's going to fall off the bed. Get back on, Goober. Um, so I bought, this will be, I'll talk about this in, uh, whew, you got a big thing of strings on there. Um, this is something I bought at Saf. It is uh, pencil roving, and it is 75% alpaca, 25% cam camel silk, and it is from Enchanted Fibers. It's a 6.8 ounce tube guy. Um, and I am spinning this woolen as a lace weight. And so here's the single I'm working on. If I can, boop, 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 boop. there we go. Keep my face close to it so it gets in focus. So it's this really cool brown that's got these pink and gold, um, pops and um, like I said I'm spinning it woolen so I'm letting it be a little bit more textural um, so where the I don't know what that is I'm not gonna spin that into it there actually has been a lot of uh, VM in this um, which is fine I'm just pulling it out as I go um, but yeah so what this is gonna grow up to be with this is going to be the vodka uh, 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 cardigan by Anna Johnson. So that is a striped cardigan that specifically calls for a fingering and a lace weight. And so I think it'll look really nice with the uh, the browns with the little pops of pinks and yellows as the kind of uh, more textural pieces in the lace weight and then this and I think it'll just I think these will go really nice together. It's definitely more of a a neutral for my wardrobe, which I'm not used to. Sorry, I think I just kissed the mic with that uh, fiber. So, um, but yeah, so that is my current spinning project. Uh, there's 6.8 ounces of that. I think I said that. So it's going to take a bit. So that is all of the works in progress. So now we're going to talk about some acquisitions that I have been given and I have made purchases. Um, so my birthday was uh, in the middle of October and some of my friends and family were kind enough to give me uh, some gifts. So I'm going to tell you about those. So first thing my mother sent me from my Amazon wish list was these two big macrame cord uh, spools. So this is Nook Theory, um, and this is in Flamingo and Plum. And this is a three millimeter macrame cord, and it's 220 yards of each. So um, I wanted to do kind of a bigger macrame piece um, in multiple colors. That's the next project that I would like to do for macrame. Um, so it's gonna be one of these. So. Uh, excited about that. So, what's up, baby? Is someone home? Is someone home? Go, run. All right, so the next thing um, that my mother picked to buy me off of my wish list is the, bye. Um, is the Tulip I-Cord Knitter. So uh, I was able to use this on the uh, shell. The um, <laughs> I was able to use this on the, uh, the Halloween costume on the shell. So it took a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, most of it was user error because I was trying to crank the wrong direction. Um, but once I got it down, um, this thing is great. 
so cool. This one had the best uh, reviews on Amazon. So this is what I put on my wish list and I got, and I'm uh, really excited about using it. So um, always there's a, uh, an Instagram artist that I've been following and she does weaving uh, with I cords. And so I will in insert a link to her uh, Instagram here, but I'm always just so amazed by the work that she does and I wanted to try it out. So um, I thought it would be fun to have one of these and I'm always just so intrigued by knitting machines um, I have a flatbed one, uh, that I've had not so much success with, um, and I've been very, uh, intrigued by circular s sock machines, and so I've been thinking about maybe 3D printing myself one, but that's on that line of, will it be harder to make than it is expensive to buy, is right on that line. So, um, we will see. So, but this guy wasn't too expensive and he was, uh, he's a cool little dude. So very excited about that. So, um, from my dear friend, uh, Anne, who I made that, uh, wall hanging for her family has a cabin up in, uh, Ely, Minnesota, I believe. And so she went up there and she got me something that I wouldn't be able to get down here in North Carolina, which I thought was very sweet. And this is polka dot sheep, tenderfoot 8020, um, which is their 8020 uh, sock yarn. And the color is winter rainbow. So I made, I got her something very low contrast. She got me something very rainbow. So we clearly know each other very well. <laughs> so that's that. Um, another dear friend of mine got me these really adorable, um, coasters. She got me these coasters that say knit happens and you got these really cute little yarn balls on there. So, uh, very excited about those. So precious. What a, what a cute. Um, I don't know the maker behind these, um, but if I figure it out, I will uh, put that in the notes. Yeah, no, it doesn't say on the back, so. Um, yeah, so those are the yarny goodness uh, stuff that I got for my birthday. And then after my birthday, the weekend after, uh, was the weekend of SAF. So SAF is South Eastern Animal Fiber Fair, and that is a big fiber festival that happens in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, every year the third week of October. So uh, last year um, I was able to get a cabin for my knitting. I have a I have a knit group. Um, we are called Get Lit and Knit, and we go to different breweries around the. Uh, triangle in North Carolina, which is Raleigh, Durham. We don't go to Chapel Hill. It's just too far. Um, uh, and so uh, I've met so many amazing people through this group. Um, some of my very coolest friends. And uh, so last year we were able to go to SAP and then this year we were able to do it again. So last year uh, we got a cabin that was like literally on the top of the mount of a mountain, which was gorgeous and very cool. Uh, but we weren't really able to, uh, get out in Asheville. And then this year I found a spot that was between the fiber festival and downtown Asheville. So we were able to go to breweries. We were able to go, uh, eat lots of great food cause Asheville is full of great food and we were able to do a lot of yarn shopping. So um, I didn't go as crazy this year as I did last year. I'm going to put in a picture of last year's fiber haul between everyone that went. So um, this year, uh, last year it was six women. This year it was six women, slightly different women. Not most of them the same, but not all of them. And so, um, so yeah, I'm going to show you what I got at the, the festival. So uh, one of the the booth that I always go to is a booth called Pandora Yarn. Um, they have crazy good deals. So a lot of times when I go to SAP, I'm looking for a deal. The first year I went, I bought a ton of their silk yarn, which actually was kind of difficult to work with. So I don't know that I super recommend it, but it was like 
crazy, like eight dollars a skein for a hundred percent silk yarn. Um, I still have a little bit of it left, I think, but it's hiding. Um, but so this year they had this 10-3 cotton and it was five dollars a skein. I couldn't say no. And these are like four ounce skeins. So we've got this pink, we've got two of these purples, we've got this navy, and we got a gold. So those will grow up to be like towels or um, a stole. I'm going to weave with them. So whatever, whatever they grow up to be, they, they'll be pretty. Um, all right. So the next thing I got was this guy. So this was from a booth that I hadn't seen before. It's called Oink Pigments. Um, and I really loved their stuff. So this is their Targi sock. And uh, the colorway name is, wait for it, Piggy Stardust. Oh. Isn't that funny? Isn't that great? So um, yeah, really, really happy with that. This was in a little sale uh, suitcase that said all the single ladies. They were the last of their kind. So um, I picked that one up. All right. So my goal at uh, SAF was to get one sweater quantity of yarn and one of fiber. So my sweater quantity of yarn ended up being this guy. So this is from Fables and Fairy Tales and it is their Superwash Merino Sport Weight and the colorway is Malevolent. So each of these big boys is uh, 770 yards each. So this is about 1500 yards of a sport weight so it's gonna be something real pretty and this was a good deal because the two of these together were 80 bucks so um, that's not too bad for a uh, for a sweaters quantity so a friend of mine ended up getting the same yarns but in a dark teal and they looked really beautiful together um, so what we may end up doing is winding off a little bit um, and swapping um, so that we have a, a coordinating color so, so we got a new, new dog in the, uh, the yarn pile here, so, and I'm going to give you a little peek to what I was working on, uh, last, mm, I guess a few, few weeks ago, I completely organized my, um, fabric stash over here. So, um, if you're interested in me breaking down what exactly is going on in there uh let me know and i will make a <laughs> apparently yep that's beautiful thanks jasper that's what i wanted i wanted a dog cleaning himself on my pack my podcast yay so <laughs> just on my yarn just licking it's great super cool um yeah so all right and so my fiber um sweater quantity is this guy so this is a tease water um there's more of them a tease water bfl uh braid and this is from random rovings um, and the color is Cherry Cordial. There's a fourth one around here somewhere. So this is a full pound. Um, and I uh, got these for 77 bucks together. So um, yeah, and there's another one. They all match, they're all the same. So um, I'm not sure this is quite next to skin, but we'll see once I um, spin this up. Uh, it could be, could not be, I guess we'll find out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really like the colors. Um, so yeah, um, one of my favorite vendors at, um, SAF, uh, I don't even know their name, but they just, I call them the fiber crib people because they bring a baby crib and they just fill it with these random chunks of uh, merino yarn. 
So these are all just chunks. And so they are a dollar a chunk. Um, and if you buy 10, you get one for free. So I really like these for blending and for, uh, for felting. So I don't know which one of these I got this year, which ones of these I got last year, but I always just grab a good selection. And um, yeah, now I put them, I, they've been living in here, my crafty bitch bag, so. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then I already showed you the, uh, get any of these fibers stuck in the bye. um I already showed you the alpaca camel silk from enchanted fibers um and yep that's already getting worked on so there's that guy and then the last thing that I got was the last thing I got was this needle felting kit for this dragon hatchling from Going Gnome. So this guy is super cute and the eagle eyed among you may realize that there is no fiber in here and that is because the little gentleman has already been made. And so I, um, I filmed me uh, making this guy, so I'll insert some footage um, now of me making him. So uh, this was really fun. This is the first, excuse me. So this was the first uh, 3D felted uh, object I've ever made. And so as you can see, you start with the, the big egg and then you make this space for the crack, for the um, the dragon hatchling, and then you put him inside, and you just build it up.
So you may notice I made uh, a few uh, changes in the pattern. I gave him a little snaggle tooth and I gave him this puff of smoke um, coming out of his nose. So uh, I made this for my partner's birthday, um, which was this weekend. So he, he has been gifted. Um, so yeah, I think he turned out pretty cute. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. So that is all of my acquisitions um, and all of the things I've been working on and all of everything and uh, I've now gotten a chance to talk about them twice so a um, uh, little bit of life stuff. So I do have life stuff and that is a uh, little bit of an explanation of where I've been for the past month. So October is always very busy for us. Um, but one of the biggest reasons that I have been a little bit MIA is because I got a second job. So my second job is teaching knitting and weaving at a local um, yarn store. So I am now uh, teaching uh, at Warm and Fuzzy, which is a, a yarn store in Cary, North Carolina. Um, and I am super excited about it. So, so as I was talking about, there was a, a little bit of a, a secret reason I made the top hat. So this was um, my first class that I taught was teaching uh, this class, this hat. So I thought that this was good um, advanced beginner uh, project because it taught you short rows and it taught you grafting and it taught you chart reading and um, but everyone was working uh, with the same stitch uh, numbers, so it because uh, it's a hat. Um, so, so yeah, this was my first class. Um, so I had three students, and they were uh, well. I will be working with uh, two of them to finish the hat, but one of them finished, and I finished my hat. And um, I've started a beginning weaving class um, that will be. So it's a two session, so it'll be wrapping up this weekend. And then this weekend, I'm teaching my first beginning knitting class. So I'm very excited and a little scared about that. Um, so that should be super, super cool. Um, I know I have some friends who are gonna be in that class, which will make it a little easier on me, I think. Um, but I'm very excited. This is the first time I've ever done anything like teaching. Uh, I don't know, I never thought I'd be a good teacher, but um, people seem to like the classes so far. So uh, we'll, I'm just gonna keep learning to teach. So, uh, <laughs> but it's it's a fun new, um, fun new thing for me. So, uh, so yeah, that's taken up a little bit of my filming time. And then, um, so I normally film uh, either on Mondays or Thursdays and so I've had um, two of my classes on Thursdays, and then last Thursday I went insane and did pure chaos and made the um, Halloween costumes. So that's, instead of filming, I did that, but I, like I said, I have a whole vlog that I'm putting together to bring you through, bring you along with me in that process. Um, but yeah, I should have a little bit more time to film coming up. Uh, November tends to be a little bit calmer for us. Um, so in October, I had my birthday, which was great. Um, we had a big party, which I, the theme was Renaissance. So I put together a little Renaissance outfit, which involved me draping fabric over myself. And I'll insert a picture of the, the costume I came up with. And uh, I made soups. Uh, we ate a lot of soups. <laughs> Everyone just hung out. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then the next week we went to, me and my friends went to SAF, which was amazing. I told you about, um, we, I always have a great time in Asheville. Asheville is an amazing place. The food is so good. The beers are so good. The weather is so good. Um, two of my closest knitting friends, uh, grew up there. So I spent a lot of time in Asheville and I super recommend it if you haven't uh, been before um, and then this last weekend was my partner's birthday so we basically oh 
I missed Halloween. We had Halloween. Um, and then my partner's birthday. So we've been basically nonstop celebrating for the past like three weeks. So it's been really fun. Uh, yeah, so that has been uh, everything that's been going on in my life so far. Uh, I will wrap this up here. Um, if you would like to find me other places on the internet, I am Crayon Disaster on Ravelry and Textilia, and I am Crayon Disaster Knits on Instagram. Um, I will see you again uh, in the next couple weeks, and me and all my dog co-hosts would like to tell you to touch all the soft things and have an amazing few weeks and uh, happy crafting. And I will see you soon. All right. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. Ooh. 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 You got to be cool. You're not being cool at all. I haven't even started. You're not being cool. <laughs>